God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is just. He will defend the poor. Lord, why do you stand afar off and hide yourself in times of distress? The poor man is devoured by the pride of the wicked. He is caught in the schemes that others have made. For the wicked man boasts of his heart's desires. The covetous blasphemes and spurns the Lord. In his pride, the wicked says, he will not punish. There is no God. Such are his thoughts. His path is ever untroubled. Your judgment is far from his mind. His enemies he regards with contempt. He thinks, never shall I falter. Misfortune shall never be my lot. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, oppression, mischief and deceit under his tongue. He lies in wait among the reeds. The innocent he murders in secret. His eyes are on the watch for the helpless man. He lurks in hiding like a lion in his lair. He lurks in hiding to seize the poor. He seizes the poor man and drags him away. He crouches, preparing to spring, and the helpless fall beneath his strength. He thinks in his heart, God forgets. He hides his face. He does not see. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is just. He, he will, will defend, defend the poor. Lord, you know the burden of my sorrow. Arise then, Lord, lift up your hand. O God, do not forget the poor. Why should the wicked spurn the Lord and think in his heart he will not punish? But you have seen the trouble and sorrow. You note it, you take it in hand. The helpless trusts himself to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and the sinner. Punish his wickedness till nothing remains. The Lord is king for ever and ever. The heathen shall perish from the land he rules. Lord, you hear the prayer of the poor. You strengthen their hearts. You turn your ear to protect the rights of the orphan and oppressed, so that mortal man may strike terror no more. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you, you know the burden of my sorrow. The words of the Lord are true, like silver from the furnace. Help, O Lord, for good men have vanished. Truth has gone from the sons of men. Falsehood they speak, one to another, with lying lips, with a false heart. May the Lord destroy all lying lips, the tongue that speaks high-sounding words, those who say our tongue is our strength, our lips are our own. Who is our master? For the poor who are oppressed and the needy who groan, I myself will arise, says the Lord. I will grant them the salvation for which they thirst. The words of the Lord are words without alloy, silver from the furnace, seven times refined. It is you, O Lord, who will take us in your care and protect us forever from this generation. See how the wicked prowl on every side, while the worthless are prized highly by the sons of men. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The words of the Lord are true, like, like silver from the furnace. 
A voice is heard crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the path of our God. From the book of the prophet Isaiah, O Lord, you have abandoned your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with fortune-tellers and soothsayers like the Philistines. They covenant with strangers. Their land is full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They worship the works of their hands, that which their fingers have made. But man is abased, each one brought low. Do not pardon them. Get behind the rocks, hide in the dust, from the terror of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty. The haughty eyes of man will be lowered. The arrogance of men will be abased, and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. For the Lord of hosts will have his day against all that is proud and arrogant, all that is high, and it will be brought low. Yes, against all the cedars of Lebanon and all the oaks of Bashan, against all the lofty mountains and all the high hills, against every lofty tower and every fortified wall, against all the ships of Tarshish and all stately vessels. Human pride will be abased, the arrogance of men brought low, and the Lord alone will be exalted on that day. The idols will perish forever. Men will go into caves in the rocks and into holes in the earth. From the terror of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty, when he arises to overawe the earth. On that day, men will throw to the moles and the bats the idols of silver and gold which they made for worship. They go into caverns in the rocks and into crevices in the cliffs from the terror of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to overawe the earth. As for you, let man alone, in whose nostrils is but a breath, for what is he worth? On that day, the branch of the Lord will be luster and glory, and the fruit of the earth will be honor and splendor for the survivors of Israel. He who remains in Zion, and he that is left in Jerusalem, will be called holy everyone marked down for life in Jerusalem. When the Lord washes away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purges Jerusalem's blood from her midst with a searing blast of judgment, then will the Lord create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her place of assembly a smoking cloud by day and a light of flaming fire by night. For over all, his glory will be shelter and protection, shade from the parching heat of day, refuge and cover from storm and rain. The proud man will lower his eyes. The arrogant man will be humbled. The Lord alone shall be exalted on that day. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and majesty. The Lord alone shall be exalted on that day. From a sermon by St. Gregory Nazianzen, Bishop. The very Son of God, older than the ages, the invisible, the incomprehensible, the incorporeal, the beginning of beginning, the light of light, the fountain of life and immortality, the image of the archetype, the immovable seal, the perfect likeness, 
the definition and word of the Father. He it is who comes to his own image and takes our nature for the good of our nature and unites himself to an intelligent soul for the good of my soul, to purify like by like. He takes to himself all that is human except for sin. He was conceived by the Virgin Mary, who had been first prepared in soul and body by the Spirit. His coming to birth had to be treated with honor. Virginity had to receive new honor. He comes forth as God in the human nature he has taken, one being made of two contrary elements, flesh and spirit. Spirit gave divinity, flesh received it. He who makes rich is made poor. He takes on the poverty of my flesh that I may gain the riches of his divinity. He who is full is made empty. He is emptied for a brief space of his glory that I may share in his fullness. What is this wealth of goodness? What is this mystery that surrounds me? I received the likeness of God, but failed to keep it. He takes on my flesh to bring salvation to the image, immortality to the flesh. He enters into a second union with us, a union far more wonderful than the first. Holiness had to be brought to man by the humanity assumed by one who was God, so that God might overcome the tyrant by force and so deliver us and lead us back to himself through the mediation of his Son. The Son arranged this for the honor of the Father, to whom the Son is clearly obedient in all things. The Good Shepherd, who lays down his life for the sheep, came in search of the straying sheep to the mountains and hills on which you used to offer sacrifice. When he found it, he took it on the shoulders that bore the wood of the cross and led it back to the life of heaven. Christ, the light of all lights, follows John, the lamp that goes before him. The word of God follows the voice in the wilderness. The bridegroom follows the bridegroom's friend, who prepares a worthy people for the Lord by cleansing them with water in preparation for the Spirit. We need God to take our flesh and die, that we might live. We have died with him, that we may be purified. We have risen again with him, because we have died with him. We have been glorified with him because we have risen again with him. When at last the appointed time had come, God sent his son into the world, born of a virgin, subject to the law. To redeem those who are subject to the law. Because of his great love for us, God sent his son in the likeness of our sinful human nature. To redeem those who are subject to the law. Let us pray. God of mercy and consolation, help us in our weakness and free us from sin. Hear our prayers that we may rejoice at the coming of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.